Yo, welcome to the Morning Hustle. Is a young lady who you've seen on the internet, informing and schooling the masses in a unique way that is definitely a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, you know where it's legally hype. Good morning, yo. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're doing great, yo. Right. Uh, welcome to the Morning <laughs> Hustle. And for Thank those you. who don't know anything about your background, you are actually legally hyped. Like, law is your thing. It is. It is. I'm actually a law student. Um, I've worked in the legal field for like 15 years. So, yeah, I'm le I'm legally hyped for real. <laughs> now, what made you, excuse me, <clears throat> now, what made you come out and say, you know, let me break some of these news stories down for people in our terms, in a kind of way that, you know, we could understand things a little better? Uh, honestly, it was, it was a fluke. I just tried it, right? Because I've been doing content for a while and I started doing content um about my brother my brother was wrongfully convicted and he's been in prison for 15 years and so i started that way and i realized like people like they enjoyed it and they was like okay she kind of hood and she educated like we like this <laughs> so when i did the russia video i was like i'm gonna just try it and see what happened like see if people take to it because i felt like it was important and I put it out there and people was like, oh yeah, like I need my news just like this. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, cause it's a lot for me to say. Um, and so it just took off from there. Now and going back to what you were saying about your brother being wrongfully convicted, is that what led you on the path to like getting more of a better knowledge and understanding about the legal justice system and how it works at large? Definitely. Um, I just felt heck of disrespected when my brother was wrongfully convicted. I felt like, you know, I'm smart. How did y'all do that? How did y'all pull the wool over my family's eye like that? I didn't appreciate it. And so I went to law school actually to help like overturn his conviction. And I just learned so much more. And I realized like, oh, this is how they did us because we don't understand how the law works. We don't really understand how politics works. Y'all been hiding us behind the gate for a long time. So now like I'm open to it, I'm hip to it. And so I was like, no, we need to learn more about this because we're being affected by things that we don't know or understand. I feel like a big part of that is, like you said, like they'll throw in big words or make things seem a bit confusing when it can be breaking, broken down simply to the point where you can explain it and, and understand it easier. Were you able to help your brother or have you been able to help him thus far? So he's still in prison right now. Um, I am working to try to um, bring him home. A lot of laws have changed in California recently that potentially will help him. Um, so I'm praying on it. We'll see what right. happens. Um, but yeah, he's still in prison. He's been in prison since he was 15. So, wow. yeah. You know, and the crazy thing about law, like, you know, sometimes I have such a, a hate and love, you know, relationship with the legal system because it really truly is about who can go into a courtroom and spin the best narrative. There are yeah. literally lawyers who know their people are guilty as hell, but let's mm -hmm. figure out what's the best lie we could tell to spin this narrative in a way that we can convince this jury to let this man walk. And then also in the situation, there are people who know they're prosecuting innocent people, but they're trying to get numbers on the, on the scoreboard. So mm -hmm. as you get ready to do what you're gonna do, because you're studying law right now, are you gonna be more of a prosecutor or are you more on the side of the defense? Uh-uh. So, okay, so let me say one thing first. It's not really spinning a lie as much as it's who could tell the best story, right? You got to tell a story that the jury is going to receive. So it may not be a lie, but it may be creative. So we'll start there. I have okay. no idea, though. People ask me that all the time. I've worked for the DA's office in L.A. I've worked for, like, Projects on the Innocence and things like that. So I have no idea, like, where I'm going to go yet. I'll be honest about that. Um, because... I believe in justice in general. And so I think for me, it's going to be wherever I'm my, like my skill set will be best utilized. That's where I'm going to go. So that, that was a fair. good safe answer. That was a very <laughs> lawyer answer of you. Right. Put this girl on law and order immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we want to test you out a little bit and help okay. some of our hustlers out and get them to understand some search, some situations a little bit better. And one of those situations is what's going on between Ukraine and Russia. Now you did start to break it down for the people, but there's been a lot of developments. Can you give us some updates in our terms? Uh, Big Bank P ran up in the spot last night. <laughs> I guess it after the show. I put out a tweet last night. I put out a video and I was like, look, 
get your gas today because gas is going to be high tomorrow. Mm. Um, but yeah, he started bombing over there last night and they didn't ran up in the spot. And Comedy Zeke was like, everybody got to fight. We ain't got enough soldiers <laughs> to be fighting whatever, you know, Big Bang P coming with. So everybody grab, grab your pots, your pans, your slingshots, whatever you got. And we finna get down and we running it up. So on site is on site and they on site. <laughs> They go medieval with it, man, and I, and I just <laughs> oh, hate yeah. to, I hate to see this, you know, this because like it puts the whole world up at arms, right? Because oh, you know, God. Ukraine wanted to be down with us. They wanted to be down with the side of democracy. They wanted to join mm -hmm. NATO, and Putin mm -hmm. is like, nah, you belong to us, and we trying to loop you back in. How hairy do you think this is gonna get? Do you think we're gonna go like full scale, and you know, and uh, you know, some of our people over here are gonna have to get up in arms and go over there as well? Well, we had already said, like, NATO and all them, they already said they weren't sending no soldiers over there to fight. But at this point, it's almost like, how are you not? Because he's been a takeover over there. He didn't already kill civilians, right? Like, people are dying. People over there are scared. So what we're saying, basically, is, like, we'll, we'll send you, like, arms. We'll send you guns. And, and we'll help you out once they, you know, ruin your territory over there. But we're not sending no people to fight for you. And it's like, how how can you not? Like, they need help. Like, they went over there. Our American troops went over there for 10 days trying to train them or whatever. And I'm like, that's not enough. Like, not no 10 days. They finna, right? Like, they finna get towed up over there. Like, help them out. So I think it is going to be full scale because uh, Big Bang P, he like, I don't appreciate that. You're not joining NATO. You're not going to have me over here solo dolo to the neck, right? Like, get it together I, like and america they're like you know you're breaking treaties we we decided a long time ago that you, what you're doing right now is out of pocket now but last night you know p made a speech and he basically called ukraine like nazis and it was like well they president is jewish so how is he a nazi mm, <laughs> did you see that picture of uh it was a picture of vladimir with uh, a guy that looked to be like Hitler that was kind of like touching his face. And it looked like he was like, you know, uh, praising him or passing on the baton kind of situation. And it's really the same thing because it's the same thing that happened when um, Hitler ran up, you know, did his thing back in, what was the, whenever he did, I don't know, I ain't gonna go there. But like, I'm a historian, I'm a like, lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Look, that ain't my, right, right, exactly, right. I, I know facts, I know history. No, but um, I... <laughs> Honestly, like, it's, it's really crazy, though, that we're even going through this right now. Um, and I feel like it definitely could have been prevented, but shoot, it's, it's up and it's stuck, so we're going to have to get down. Now, real quick, from your own legal perspective, right, you know, bringing it local back over here in the States. So Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lane's situation is about to be interesting. Uh, April 5th is when they say they're going to trial. Based off the things that you've seen and the information that the streets have heard, how do you think this is going to play out? Because clearly someone's lying here. Oh, yeah, somebody lying. The thing about it is it's going to depend on the evidence they can bring in. So the last I heard was they were struggling trying to figure out where the little bullets was or whatever. In that, in that case, they can't find the bullet fragments or something like that. That's a key part of the evidence. So if they don't find that, you don't have a case. So... So I'm going to read this to you that a reporter put out yesterday and you try to help us break it down because I've seen a lot of people arguing and they seem like they were a little confused about what was being said. So this was the update. She said, and her name is Nancy DeLeon. She said, I have transcripts from court reporter. This is what Tory Lane's attorney said. We are in the process of actually retaining an expert with respect to DNA. It is our hope that we will be able to review and confirm the LAPD's analyst, which from our standpoint was favorable. The precise nature of the LAPD analyst and its results were not disclosed or described. There is a discovery protective order in this case, so it's not public. So what does this mean for Tory Lane? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> So what does it mean when they say it's favorable? Does that mean that? Basically what he's trying to say is like what they have, what evidence they may or may not have. It looks like it goes in Tory's favor. So it may prove that he's not guilty, I guess, so to say. But that depends on the jury at the end of the day, right? So it could look favorable for Tory right now, but it depends on what jury you get. And it also depends on what the prosecutor has at the end of the day. 
truth be told, like Megan is cooperating. So she is like, she's the victim, right? And yeah. everybody love a victim. Like, keep it real. When you get into a courtroom, mm -hmm. they love a victim. Don't so see this way on the internet. The internet and a jury are two different things. Because let me yes. keep it a buck. The same people that's on the internet are the same people who don't show up to jury duty. So that's mm. on the Right. Talk about it. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> keeping it real, right? Like, if you Absolutely. don't want the jury duty, you, you, I don't want to hear it. So the thing about it is that it's going to depend on how the jury perceives that evidence. So right now, it may seem favorable for him. Like, it may seem like, oh, it goes in his favor. But it's really going to depend on what they bring to that jury. And if she mm. got something different to say, the jury, just hope you get a good jury. That's all huh. I'm saying. How possible is it that the jury will be able to drive the boat before they start the proceedings? And will that sway them in any particular way? <laughs> they better drive the boat. They better drive the boat. Okay. Lane's better drive the boat, it seems like. They better provide a boat at this Ooh. point because he Go back to Canada. Not too good. It's not looking too good. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. He, 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 ain't, from, he ain't from the state, so they really going to be like, get up out of here. You know, Canada. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't extradite him back already. Because the case is here, they're not going to extradite him, right? So it, it don't really matter. I don't know if he's a citizen or not. Of um, I don't know I if he's a citizen. So. Okay, yeah. So they're, I mean, like if he gets convicted, he'll probably end up going back. It just depends on what the prosecutor wants. Oh, he might get deported. Well, thank you so much, legally <laughs> hype. Thank you. And you know, I understand you got hacked recently. So if you want people to follow you, just so we can get those numbers back to where they need to be, like, where can they go? You can go. So I have a backup page on Instagram. It's I am legally hype three because I am a Trey. Um, <laughs> so it's <laughs> legally hype three. So you can follow me on there. But every other platform, I have YouTube, uh, TikTok, Twitter. It's I am legally hype. So the only thing that changed was Instagram right now. I did get my account back, but I can't change my name yet. So ah oh, man, that one alone. Wait, so yeah, you're a third? Like big, did I feel like Big Bang P has something to do with this. That's cool. I, they did because guess what? When I Whoever half my account, they was from Turkey, so he tried to be slick. You feel me, and go get his little neighbors to run up on me, and he put the little <laughs> homies on me because he knew I was slow, right? Because they were like, "Oh, we gonna verify you? Here go your blue check with the My stupid self, I didn't click the link. Whole page, no, whole page. Well, so I was damn. hurt. I'm in the fetal position for a whole 24 hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yo, Legally Hype, thank you so much. Continue success. And thank you so much for putting such a creative spin on the world that we live in right now. I look forward yes. to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the time. We are the Morning Hustle.